glad that you are here. My name is David. And I'm Jake. And we are here so that we can have fun, so that we can laugh, and we hope to inspire you with what the Lord has been putting on our hearts throughout this week. Uh, keep in touch with us through all of the different ways that we have. Jake, what do we have? Man, we've got social media. We've got some awesome Instagrams that are happening right now. A lot of posts happening, a lot of stories, so keep track up with that. Uh, we've got Facebook stuff for your parents and for you guys to keep track of what we're doing during the week. And then on Tuesday nights, if you haven't done so already, uh, we may not be meeting in person, but we're meeting digitally for our youth group. And it has been so much fun. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing Zoom awesome. meetings together. And uh, it's been funny. We Last night we did our meeting and watching everybody on screen talk and try to like figure out like, oh, what's happening? Oh, no. It was really fun. And uh, you know what? It was a close second to meeting in person. So yeah. get on that, guys. We want you guys to be a part of that and to uh, connect together during this time. Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. We are all about fun. And totally. um, Jake, I, I, I'm learning as I'm getting to know him more and more, is just super smart, and I am not. So we're going to play a game uh, um, with us and the interns. Uh, this is called Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Are you smarter than a fifth grader? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we are here at the table. Mackenzie's going to ask us questions. We're playing Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Mackenzie, um, we, uh, Chris and I, same team, right? We are. <laughs> yeah, I messed up. Yeah, I, I messed okay. up one. No, I think that's right. So, yeah, we're yeah. on the same team. You guys are on the same team. Um, we get to pick what uh, what subject they get to answer, and they get to pick which subject we get to answer. Mm -hmm. There's no really um, consequences at stake here, but the team that loses is just stupid. Dumb. Stu stupid. <laughs> yeah. You can ridicule us yeah. later. So. In the so. comments. In the Wait, no, no mean comments. No mean comments. Never mind. <laughs> you can do mean comments. Okay. <laughs> what are the subjects again? There's history, English. Geography, science, and math. Let's go with geography for Nathaniel. Oh, all yeah. right. All right, here we go. All man. right. What is the main language spoken in the Canadian province of Quebec? <laughs> <laughs> French, probably. Yes. Oh. Hey! So we'll uh, also, just... oh. no, I, I was just going to make, I, I think the French part of Canada is the not cool one, though, right? Oh, no, I don't think you can say that on the internet. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> don't That's going to live forever. <laughs> <laughs> We're sorry, you two. <laughs> so why don't you pick a subject for Jake? Hmm. English. Oh, gosh. Uh -oh. Okay. Who is the creator of the classic book characters Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn? Uh, uh oh. It's Mark Twain. Yes. Yeah. Ah! Nice. Do fifth graders know that? I only know that because of this. Fifth graders reading those books. I was about to say, that. is that a fifth grade? Damn. It's, it's just are you smarter than school? It's just are you smarter than school? Um. All right. I'll pick for Chris. Okay. Remember which one you told me not to pick? Oh yeah. I ah, know. Here it comes. We're gonna do math for Chris. <laughs> all right. Bye bye. A lot of mercy. For oh. You. When writing out a fraction, the numbers above and below the line are uh -huh. called what? The numerator and denominator. Hey! Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Switch, switch, switch. Uh, oh. Numerator, denominator. Okay, yes. <laughs> there you go. Oh, yeah. A little bonus for you. <laughs> nice work, Chris. Well done, well done. All right, am I, I'm asking you a question now? Sure. All right, here we go. Uh, geography. Geography. Because that hasn't been nope. taken yet. Okay. Yes, we'll actually I did geography. Oh no, I want to do something different. Though. Okay, we haven't done history yet. History. I'll do history then, okay. Okay. All right, David. What was the name of the last queen of France? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Ben, ben, <laughs> oh. Catherine? No. Marie Antoinette. Oh. oh. Let them eat cake. Let wow. them eat cake. Dang. I put, the, I put the buff in history buff, you know? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we got like a negative point or however that works. So, so far, wow. we're, so far we're losing. Yeah. And we've got right. two? We've got yes. both of ours, right? right. Sweet. Yeah. We're plowing ahead. Yeah. Two more rounds. Nathaniel, right. history. Okay, Nathaniel. Challenging me on that. You just blow my bluff. <laughs> you just blow my bluff. <laughs> the region of France is 
region known as the Fertile Crescent is located in present day what? <laughs> How specific do I have to be? It's pretty it's broad. In, it's in the so Middle East, right? Yes, that's actually the answer. Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? Woo! Wow, that was very nice. <laughs> this game is rigged. <laughs> Alright, which one is Jake going to do, Chris? Hmm. Math. Math. Oh, math. Okay. If a shopping cart contains one apple, two bananas, three oranges, four hot dogs, what percent of the cart's total contents is fruit? What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. This is a word problem. <laughs> I don't have any paper for this. You gotta visualize okay, it. Okay, say that one more time. Okay. And there's okay. no toilet paper. David, David has it, so Jake doesn't know the answer. We'll ask yeah. David. Okay, if a shopping cart contains one apple, two bananas, three oranges, and four hot dogs, what percent of the cart's total contents is fruit? 60%. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh. That was impressive. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That was half a guess. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. That's that pretty was... much that's pretty much all that's left in the stores, huh? That's pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much. <laughs> Let's do geography yeah. for Chris. Oh, geography right. is popular. What's country? What's <laughs> What yes. is, I can do it. <laughs> which country is both a I lost it. Which country is both an island and a continent? Uh, Australia. Yeah. Hey. 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 I wouldn't have known that. That's so good. <laughs> back to me to mess it up again. <laughs> uh, I mean your question was hard. Give David English. English. Ooh. Okay. I like this at all. <laughs> the words the and an A are known as what in English grammar? I I think I know, but like I, I'm 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 worried that I'm overconfident and <laughs> okay. I'm gonna say it and I'm gonna be wrong. Is it a conjunction? No. Conjunction it's, junction. Do, do, do any of you know what it is? Just start with like a T? No. <laughs> it's an article. I got nothing. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, because I totally remember that. <laughs> That, jeez, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was a little bit embarrassing. I'm not gonna lie. Yes. All right, last round. That was loud. I'm sorry. Woo. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> Nathaniel, I would like you to answer a English question. An English question. <laughs> Ouch. Did I not say that? That was proper English. That was good. <laughs> Um, who is the author of the 1916 oh, no. novel oh, no. about social and racial inequality to kill a mockingbird? Who's the author of it? <laughs> yes. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Oh, great book. I know it. Oh. <laughs> to kill a mockingbird. Mm. I feel so bad. Like, I, like, I know I it. I think I know but it. I don't. I, like, I, yeah. Harper Lee. Uh, I'm sorry. But I wasn't does a fifth grader know that? You don't read that till high school. I did that. Uh, Chris, if you pick one that Jake can't get, they will have two wrong, and we have you two guys. wrong. You have two wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Bit of animosity in that zoom over there. <laughs> wow. But I love switching places. You're fired. <laughs> Okay. That's fine. I, yeah. can, I can take it. <laughs> Would you like yeah. to take? Without <laughs> skipping a beat. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So yeah, no pressure, but. So you pick I one for two. Jake. Remember, he likes history. Science. Oh, we haven't done science yet. Oh, yeah. That's a, oh. Okay. Oh, we might have a chance. All right. The earth has four layers. The thickest of which is the mantle. What is the thinnest layer called? <laughs> <laughs> this is a joke, right? Oh, yes. It's the earth. Oh, it's the <laughs> okay. Uh, four layers. The mantle is the thickest. Hey, hands down. Um, tectonic plates? No. 
Uh-huh. That, yes, is, that is, is science related. Yes. The crust? Yes. Yes, I'm, I knew one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I knew one. <laughs> uh, okay, well, there you go. Okay, we gotta pick some hard subjects. Yeah, we do. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Don't mess it up. Watch you mess it up now. I'm Ew. gonna. Or no, you gotta pick one for Chris. Yeah. Let's do another science one for Chris. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. We'll see what's my next question. What? They're easy, so good luck. <laughs> well, I just, I don't know. Okay, what species can live on both water and land? Reptiles? I mean, I t <laughs> that's not a type. <laughs> yeah. Amphibians. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All right. yeah. Did we get it right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, that's because technically reptiles are amphibians, but I'm thinking of I didn't like the technical science. Shh, stop answer. your head. <laughs> <laughs> he got it. He got it. Well, he got it. There, there it is. Of an asterisk like Barry Bonds. I would say. Uh, I would say we, you guys win and we can stop there. But I really want to see how you do on your question, I, David. All right. I man, I go over three. Let's see, David. What subjects have you? <laughs> History, math, English, science, geography. Let's just hit up another science question. Why not? Okay, science. <laughs> All right, you got it. Um, what are the three states of matter? Solid, gas, liquid. Oh! That was the only one left. That's very yes! All right, yes. here we go. Very nice for your hires. It's a tie game. Yes, it is a tie game. We can't do ties. No. That's not let's allowed do, in student ministry. Let's do, let's do Jake versus me. Okay. Let's ask one question. First one to buzz. First one to buzz in. Mm -mm. Gets to answer it. All right. Can I can I look for a hard question? Yes. Well, no. What? Yes. <laughs> it's a tiebreaker. Um, and, and when you buzz in, you have to answer right away. You can't think about it. Okay. I'll do math, since it seems to be do the fair ground. Do the cheese. <laughs> okay. Here we go. If the first person takes 25% of the cake, and the second person takes 20% of the, uh, of the remainder, how much of the original cake remains? 55%. No. Uh, <laughs> 25 and 20? Okay. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, if the, if the first person takes 25% of the cake, and the second person takes 20% of the remainder, how much of the original cake remains? Oh, Does snap. Jake have a lifeline? No, I'm just kidding. Um, okay. Please. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most confident. My last two lives. <laughs> brain cells. Fifty-six uh, percent. Uh, uh, uh. No. I think. Crap. Are we even close? <laughs> You're That's close. Like, You're very close. close. So. 60%. Yes. Oh! <laughs> well, to be fair, that was a complete and total guess. Like but that was like the <laughs> best <laughs> number. That, that, was that was like the next number. All right. All right. Well, guys, hey, um, that's that. We're going to switch gears now, and we're going to bring in Jake and Mai's wife. Mai's? Mai's? Yeah. Wives, we're going to bring way. our wives. <laughs> <laughs> Separate, yes. We're yeah. going to bring in our wives on a Zoom call for a new segment that we're calling Bet Your Husband. Ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. Here we are. That's right. We are doing Bet Your Husband. As you can see, we have our lovely wives. Everyone say hi to Nikki. Say hi to Beth. Hi. <laughs> oh. As this unfolds, no. you'll understand. You'll get it. You'll figure yeah. it out. And frankly, you guys... What you'll care about is that we're gonna get pied in the face. If we right get here. something wrong, this is our consequence right here, which I was really hoping it would be shave, not shaving cream, but whipped cream, but this is shaving cream. And so Gotta keep we're, that yeah, we're keeping it interesting oh. around here. Good Lord. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Do that. Did oh. you just eat it? Yes. David, I don't know if that's poisonous. It said Why it's not that? very poisonous. <laughs> it said on Google it wasn't very poisonous, so yep. So there you go. <laughs> you told me a little poison. Just, just, that, just pour that's what, that's what I the, just drank a monster, so it's about, <laughs> you know. I got it's, 
Let's, let's, all right, let's do this thing. Chris, what is the first question? Um, who's the first to go? Who's the, I think we were the first to go last time, so I feel like, I feel like we should yeah. start. Uh, Chris, why don't you ask Nikki how many things Jake can do? How many car brands can Jake name? I think he can name 10. Are you crazy? Beth, would you like to? Oh, is that too many? Could bet more? Or I, I think he could do. David could do eleven. So Nikki, you can either challenge or you can bet more. Um, challenge. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Ten car. Eleven car brands. Go. Toyota, Honda. Ford, Chevy, Chrysler, GMC, Lamborghini, Ferrari, Maserati, uh, BMW, uh, Mercedes-Benz, Audi. Boom! Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was like 15 seconds to spare. Wow. Yeah, that's Very my nice. man. Wow, that's <laughs> one, one, two, two three. Oh! oh. <laughs> There's paper towels. Woo! You could shave your eyebrows then. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> they are very bushy. Oh my gosh. It's so thick. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Is that doing anything? <laughs> no. It's wow, that was a lot. Like, <laughs> that, that was like layer on that layer. That was a small plate. All right. Pie number one, and it smells like straight up shaving cream. Just. <laughs> Like, yeah. that's all I'm smelling right now. <laughs> all right, let's keep this thing going. Bet. how many chick flicks can David name? Oh, he does not like chick flicks. <laughs> I'm going to say six. Okay. Nikki, challenge, or can Jake name more? I think he can do, he watches a lot of chick flicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she called you out. <laughs> you have. Um, I think he can do seven. seven. All right, babe. I think you could do eight. Oh. Okay. Keep going. I think he could do nine. <laughs> Beth? Okay, ten. <laughs> Uh, Nikki, would you challenge? Like okay. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I was gonna challenge on the next one. All right, all right. <laughs> ten. Here we go. Ten oh, chick flicks for David Wood. So much stress. Okay. okay. Ready? Ten. Go. <laughs> ten things I hate about you. How to oh, lose yeah. a guy in ten days. Um, the Notebook. Um, Knights in Rodanthe. Um. <laughs> I'm only at four. This is oh. not good. <laughs> oh, that's rough. Um, uh, the notebook nets in the road out there. Um, Chocolat. Um, what? Does that count? Does that count? Yeah, it's the way oh. you said it. And you're done. Oh, there we oh, go. No. That's so sad. Hit five. <laughs> you guys ready for this one? Ah. Here we go. Oh, it's Ready? Gonna go right in your beard. Uh, like my nose points up, so like don't put it <laughs> <laughs> don't go this way. Yeah, don't go that way. So Jake, which way you gotta go? <laughs> All right, three, two, one. Oh! oh. oh. Look at that. You missed half of his face. <laughs> I was gonna say, what the heck happened? How did mine get hardly any in this? What you is gotta this? smack the other side now. No. Uh, <laughs> no. It got in my nostril, if that makes you feel any better. <laughs> All right, so now the score is one to one. The first person with three pies in the face loses. We've got, we're gonna go on to the next round as I'm cleaning myself up. Chris. Uh, I gotta blow my nose. I feel like there's some residual <laughs> shaving cream. Yeah, go for it. All right, Chris, ask away. Is it Nikki now? Yeah, it, it is. Okay. Nikki, how many types of tools can Jake name? Types of tools. Types of tools. Okay. Um, eight. Okay. Bet. Nine. Nine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. Ten. Bet. Eleven. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh my 
Oh my god. <laughs> 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 wow. You could have challenged it. Um, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. Ready? All right. Yep. Go. Wait, hold on. Stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How many do I need to do? 11. Oh, shoot. Tons of tools. <laughs> That's so much. All right, go. Go. A uh, hammer, a sledgehammer, a saw, a table saw, a miter saw, a Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, a, a monkey wrench, an Allen wrench, a adjustable wrench, a, um, a Dremel tool. Eleven. Boom. There you go. Done. Yes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. Sorry, I can handle another pie. Okay, I think. Get him like on all of the things, not just half. All of it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know where this is coming from, but here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, oh. 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 It was like Pinocchio. <laughs> There's so much. That's Instagram worthy. I feel like ripping off my nose. Pinocchio. <laughs> there you go. Everyone's so. Oh. That looks like Jack Frost. Jack Frost gone wrong. I mean, more, even more. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the roll. We should have done a round with So as as no. Jake is no. cleaning himself up. Uh, there we go. I can see now. Whew. Let's uh, let's ask Beth what? what the next thing is. Oh yeah, okay, go. Beth, yeah. how many makeup brands can David name? How much do you pay attention to what I use? I don't think you're allowed to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> do you see the panic in my eyes, though? <laughs> He's gonna challenge it. <laughs> no? Seven. Challenge! <laughs> oh, yes! I don't even think I can name two! Oh, uh, shoot! Ready? Go. Mac. Uh, Maybelline. NYX. Uh, 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 oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Estee Lauder. Uh, oh. Uh, Big sexy hair. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, One more. <laughs> oh gosh. I can't. I I'm lost. <laughs> oh yes. my gosh. So I'm talking about three pies for Jake. <laughs> my wife has no qualms about that. So. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, it that did nothing. Nope. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think Chris wants to do the sloshy one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so our interns are coming back in. We're gonna do one more round since we have one more plate of this shaving cream. Um, one more round. Uh, Mackenzie is coming up with a random um, subject. We each have to name off uh, something that applies to that subject. Uh, the first person that cannot do it gets a pie in the face. Sloshy pie. A sloshy, sloshy pie. pie. So, Chris, you're to my right. You start. Here's a good healthy subject. You also know Christian songs. Christian songs. Oh. All right. Do we have to name the band? Just the songs. So okay. Can... Uh-huh. Good, good father. Ancient of days. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, come to the altar. <laughs> uh, my God is good. Um, uh, uh, Waymaker. Silent Night. Raise the Hallelujahs. <laughs> Oceans. <laughs> uh, no Longer Slaves. Do it again. Oh boy. You <laughs> took mine. <laughs> uh, um, five. Um, four. Why can't three, I think of any? Two. <laughs> one. I just. Oh! Yes! <laughs> yes! What happened? <laughs> 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 
But that was Honestly, really I've been funny. so stressed in my mind. So I was, I was, I was like, like loading this guy. <laughs> I, don't know, I can only think of the ones you guys said. Oh, this is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, wow, that's, I'm a terrible Christian. That thing I deserve else? this. That's all right. You're, you're a great intern if that counts for anything. No. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. Oh. oh, it's just wet and oh. gross. Oh. oh my gosh. Here, here, take that. <laughs> oh. Good luck. Woo! Look, that was a lot of fun, guys. So much oh, fun. Oh, I put it on my eye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, next up, friends, we've got our time of inspiration. Join us back over on stage and uh, check out what we're going to talk about next. Oh, man. That was crazy. Our wives loved it. We had a blast. Thanks for watching. Now we're going to switch gears just a little bit to play a game called You Don't Really Know Me. Hey, there we go. Yes. You Don't Really Know Me. Here's what's going to happen. Our, our fearless leader, Kenzie, here, she's going to ask us questions about the other person. So we'll start it off. Kenzie, why don't you ask Jake a question? Okay, about Jake. Me. Um, very important question. Do you think David can touch his toes? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say, <laughs> oh, well, okay, listen, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say no. It's a little hurtful, but you're not wrong. <laughs> so exactly. say, if you could, you could demonstrate for us, but you I cannot. I am, I am very unflexible. Yeah. It's okay. So am I. So am I. <laughs> yeah. I'm right there with you. All right. Okay. Jake. No. No. David. David. David, yes. David. What is Jake's biggest fear? Clowns. Does, <laughs> does Jake have a big fear? Uh, <laughs> 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 if clowns is your final answer. <laughs> clowns. Oh, clowns. Not clouds. I was like, clowns? <laughs> That's what I heard, but clowns. Um, I mean, they're, they're... Do you have a biggest fear? I'm trying to think of it actually, legitimately. Like we go like, like dark, you know. Like we all have like fear fears, you know. Like there's these like clowns, but then like we're all afraid of like loneliness, you know. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> I mean that's very true. I mean if we're gonna go real dark, then I am afraid of dying alone. Love being alone with a clown. <laughs> yeah. It's reasonable. That's, it's not right. It's not right. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. All right, Jake. Um, do you think David has ever ding dong ditched? <laughs> That's so funny. I haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> that, that phrase. That sounds so funny when you hear it again. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm gonna say David is a mischievous person, and from my time with him, I feel like he's mischievous and can mess around with people. So yes, I think he ding dong ditched. Huh? I have never ding dong ditched anyone. No. What? No way! Never. Really? That's gonna tear your friendship apart. Yeah. I know. Yeah. <laughs> or it's going to strengthen it because we're going to go and do it right now <laughs> after this show. <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> Bro, handshake. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Sanitizer. <laughs> oh, hey. David, was Jake ever sent to the principal's office? Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Really confident. <laughs> what do you think for? Oh, I don't want to answer that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what it would have been for. I, in fact, have been to the principal's office twice. Not because I was in trouble. Actually, no. Sorry. I take that back. I was in trouble once. <laughs> the other time, I was there to like. It was part of like conflict resolution between like some catty girls like trying to like get at each other and they were trying calling witnesses like who said what did they say this did they say this and now i'm just like i am a helpless bystander i don't know what's going on so yes twice i've been to the principal's office nice actually done so you do know me tell us the time <laughs> you're in trouble okay so the time that i was in trouble at my school when i was in sixth grade there was a staircase uh outside a pretty big staircase and I was 
a little bit cocky about this and I I some friends of mine would like jump off the stairs you know so many stairs like jump like oh I'm gonna do 10 stair or whatever and I was like I'm gonna do the whole staircase and I jumped and I cleared this entire staircase without dying I little I almost ran right into the wall but a teacher saw me do it and she goes <laughs> go to the principals and that was it everything else though I got away with <laughs> well that was a fun game and I think what's fun about that is you know yeah we David and I have known each other for a little while now and uh, we know these little tidbits and facts and the way we kind of gotten to know those things though is and, and some other stuff because we We've worked together for a while now, several months, and um, the thing with that is, and the reason why we've been able to get to know each other more is because we've spent time together. We have done um, stuff with work, we've done stuff with youth group, we've done stuff outside of it, and we have um, really gotten to know each other um, just by being around each other. And what's cool is that when you look at the Bible, uh, there's a word for that, that that being together and knowing each other well, and that's the word abide. And last week uh, in our video, we, we ended our video talking about uh, peace, hope, and joy. And talking about abiding in those things comes right out of Romans 15, 13. And so what we wanted to do and what we were thinking about was, okay, like that's all great, like what we did last week, so what does it mean to abide? And uh, those, the best like illustration of that comes out of John 15, 4. And this is when Jesus is talking. He's talking before he leaves earth and he's uh, doing his last supper with his disciples. And he says this, he says, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. And really the big thing here, guys, is that Jesus is saying abide in me. And we want to focus in on that because um, let's face it, we all want to have a good relationship with Jesus. And the only way to do that, though, is we have to abide in him. We have to um, experience life with him. We have to pursue him. We have to, just like any other relationship, we have to be around that person. Um, for David and I, like we have a good working relationship, but that's, that's a lot of it's because we have worked together and been in the same room on a lot of different things. Um, and we have got to know each other outside of work over personal stuff about our families and, and just life in general. Uh, but that's just because we've been, a, we've been around each other. And that's the big thing. We've been abiding with each other. And Jesus is saying the same thing. Abide in me and you'll grow closer to him. That's, that's like the gist of what we're going to talk about here today. And so we're going to go through three truths today. Um, just ways, different ways that we could abide in Jesus and get to know him more. And the first one I want to throw out to you guys is abiding in him through his word. Now, I know that maybe you guys have heard this um, many times over before. and Maybe we have shared it with you guys one too many times. Um, but the bottom line is that this truth um, is, it's true. And it's, uh, it's so practical in, in many ways. But guys, the word of God, the Bible here, um, is what's one of the best ways to abide in Jesus. Because um, in John 1, we see that the word uh, is not just like printed word, but it's actually something that's a little bit more uh, alive than what we think. In John 1, uh, chapter, chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, it says this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And I could read kind of the other verses, but I want to focus in on those on those words there because what it says is that it's basically saying that Jesus was the Word. He was always there, He always is, and He always will be. Um, but He is the physical manifestation of God. Um, he's bringing the word of God to the people who are here on earth when he came and he lived and he taught and he shared. Um, many of his parables start off with the kingdom of heaven is like blank. And it because what it, what he was doing was he's trying to um, share with people who God is like. Like what's he like? What's he all about? What does he care for? What are his priorities um, for us in life? And we can't know those things unless we get into the word. Now, the nice thing, too, about this is that um, the easiest way is just to read your Bible. And um, I know that there are different ways that you can do that, and we're going to kind of talk about that. We're actually going to provide some, some notes for you guys to, be, to help you guys with that. But it's not just reading the Bible, but you could listen to the Bible. You could, um, you could have somebody teach you about the Bible. Anything that revolves or, or just goes around the Word of God, 
um, you're going to know Jesus more through it. Um, Tuesday nights we talk through about the Bible, we hear about it on Sunday mornings, all these different ways, learning through uh, the Word, we get to know Jesus a little bit more. Absolutely. The knowing the Word, we get to we get to know how we can abide in Christ more, but more than the Word, we can also uh, spend time in prayer as well. And that's the second way that we can abide in Christ. Uh, the, the book of Psalms, chapter 145, verse 18, it says this, The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. When we go to God in prayer, when we, when we call on Him, it says that the Lord is near to that person. So, so if you're a follower of Jesus and, and you call on Jesus' name, if you call on God's name, God um, reveals himself to us. He, he shows up in our lives and he draws near to us. Um, God is always around, right? Um, I think uh, the, the Holy Spirit, you are welcome here song kind of sticks out in my mind in this mm -hmm. moment. Like, um, let us become more aware of your presence. And, and in those moments of us praying, we become more aware that God is with us. Uh, we become more aware. It's not like God was gone, and then all, when we pray, He's like, oh, I'm here, like a genie that we, <laughs> that we rub the lamp and He shows up. But He is always there, and, and He is always available to us. But when we pray, um, we get to experience God um, as, as He is showing up and making Himself more known in our lives. Um, just a simple way that you guys can pray um, and abide in Christ just in your day-to-day -day life. There's this prayer called a breath prayer, and it's really simple. You just breathe in, and you breathe in one word. And, and, I, and my, my prayer, that the kind of my go-to breath prayer is God. And then when you breathe out, you just say a short sentence. So I say, God, help me. And if in moments of need, in moments where I just am struggling, it just kind of, when my brain is just moving around, it helps me recenter and refocus on what is right. Um, and, I, and I also think, I think about my cell phone, right? To when we pray, um, if we have our cell phone and we use it all day long and not just like use it just a little bit, but like have all the apps open run Spotify the whole time on YouTube while you're trying to navigate to a place that you're driving to all day. Um, our phone, our batteries are going to die. And, and, and towards the end of its life, um, it, it, have you ever noticed like you're playing a game on there and like it starts to get choppy? Uh, that happens on my phone. Um, that is so much like our lives and the way that we uh, plug back in to recharge um, our phones, we, we plug it into the cable to the power source. And for us, prayer is like plugging into our power source. Mm -hmm. Prayer is like going back to God and allowing him as he draws nears to us, uh, allowing him to fill our hearts, fill our lives, so that when we're abiding in him, we um, can find rest, we can find peace, we can find hope, all of those things. But we we get that, that through prayer. Yeah, absolutely. And. The last thing that we wanted to throw out to you guys, so we talked about digging into the Word and praying with God and those ways and how they abide, how you can abide in Jesus in that way. The last thing we want to throw out to you guys is worship. Um, and that, when I think of worship, the best way or the best place to find something about worship and to help us understand it more it comes out of the Psalms. I mean, the Psalm is really um, a book about worship, but Psalm 95 uh, verses 1 and 2 says this. <clears throat> O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. And guys, the thing about worship that's really interesting is that um, in not just this psalm, but in other psalms, um, it talks, I mean, we when we think of worship, we think of when we go to church, we sing three songs, maybe four songs if we're feeling really uh, crazy that day. Um, and we, we sing them and they're, they're great jams and they're, they've got really great uh, guitar solos or whatever. There's one really good worship leader um, or maybe the whole worship band is just fantastic. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Our, our, our way of worship, it feels like it's confined just to that one box when in reality, um, it's much broader than that. And in here, when you read these Psalms, it says, it doesn't say 
um, make a on key joyful singing noise. Like it doesn't say that. It doesn't say you have to be a good singer. It doesn't have to say you have to be a good instrumentalist. Um, yes, yeah, so it doesn't say that, like, that you can. You have a good melody. It, all it says here is just to make a joyful noise. And guys, when it comes to worship, uh, it comes. At, the biggest thing is that it's a matter of the heart, and our heart is is what matters to God when we worship. We may have terrible voices, right? Most of us, yeah. <laughs> Everybody else is raising their hand in this room. Um, and we may have terrible voices, but that's not what matters to God. What matters is that we're singing um, joyfully uh, to Him. Because, and really, guys, when we when we think about worship, there's all kinds of reasons to worship God. He's the God who is all powerful. He is all knowing. He is uh, great, uh, but He's also good. He is kind. He is loving. He is merciful. He is gracious. Um, and when we get to know Him more, when we abide in Him more. We get to see all these aspects of who he is, these characteristics of who he is. Um, and when we get to know him in a deeper level, uh, we find out that we can't, we, all we can do is just give thanks, to be grateful that we have a relationship with the God of the universe. Uh, and so when we go into worship, it's not about going in um, and singing like the best that we absolutely can. What we need to be going into when we go into worship is to go into it with a heart that's focused on Jesus, that's focused on, um, man, God, you are so merciful. You're so gracious to me. Um, I can't do anything but sing all of the praises to you um, and worship you. And when it comes to worship, what's nice too is that it's not relegated just to singing. It's not relegated just to music. I mean, there's so many other ways you can worship. Um, just by virtue of you athletes when you go out and you hit the field whether it's football baseball soccer uh, lacrosse or badminton I don't really care like no matter what you do uh, God's gifted you with certain abilities and gifts and that's a worship that's uh, giving praise to him just by using the gifts and abilities that God has given you if you're a writer if you're uh, an actor if you're um, whatever it is just by living your life and living it out for God, like that is an act of worship to him. Yeah, essentially what we're saying through worship, through prayer and through the word, we, we are asking you guys to invite God into everything that you're doing. As you're abiding in Christ, you're living with him, going with him. And, and as I've been studying scripture and, and worshiping, this, this theme keeps on coming back to my mind of, of um, a restoration of the garden and and let me let me tell you what I mean by that um, when, when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden um, they had perfect communion with God actually if you look here in, in the book of Genesis uh, it says this it says then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living creature and the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. He's saying that God breathed this life into him, and then he placed the man in this garden, that God planted the garden. He, he took the time to plant this the plants in there. And, and, and then in the garden with Adam and Eve, they had this perfect communion with the Lord, that they walked together and that they talked together and that everything was good. And then when sin entered the world, it was shattered, it was fractured. It, it, they didn't have that same connection that they had with God before that. And, and, and I'm seeing this as, as we are abiding in Christ, as we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us who has, who has restored our souls, who has made us holy, made us perfect, we can have that garden relationship that perfect communion with god we can have that again in our souls so when we talk about abiding in christ it's more than just like checking off a list on our to-do list of reading the bible or whatever it's it's more about just bringing yourself back to a place where your relationship with god is unblemished mm. and that is really a beautiful thing that when we abide in him when we anchor ourselves in christ and when we go all in with him through his word through prayer through worship we get this wonderful opportunity to to have a glimpse of what the garden was like and what heaven will be like mm. and we can have that right here on earth today let me pray for you guys jesus we love you 
God, help us to abide in you. Help us to, um, to live with you. God, we can't do it on our own. We are broken. We are sinful. But you, through your strength, through your Holy Spirit, can draw near to us. You can hold us and you can help us to walk with you, God. Uh, I pray that this week we would strive to be more and more conscious about abiding in you, God. God, we love you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, that's all we've got here for you guys today. Uh, again, we hope that you take this time. We've got a lot of free time on our hands, so take some time out of your schedule to find ways to abide in Christ. And what we're going to include in this episode for you guys is we're going to include some what we're calling show notes. Basically, we want to give you guys um, just different ways to abide in Jesus. Uh, we talked about the word, we talked about prayer, we talked about worship. Um, but you guys, what's really cool is that those are um, really broad things under really specific things that you can do to connect with Jesus. And that's what we want to give you guys so that you could um, abide in Jesus all the more. So with that, that's what we've got here today. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you guys later.